Hello again, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series, video 2D. This is two-dimensional kinematics. Now we've taken a good look at one-dimensional kinematics. Um, we're going to extend this uh, analysis into two dimensions. The objects we consider now will be moving in straight lines, but those lines, instead of being either left, right, up, down, will be at some angle. We could use uh, mathematical vector notation, or we could use um, um, notation using theta, uh, what are called elevation angles. We'll see that shortly. Now, a standard example, we have um, a rocket that's fired from rest uh, with, a given <coughs> with a given acceleration and a given elevation angle, 60.9 degrees. Um, what we want to do is take a look at, look at this in a, in a vector sense in terms of the three vector uh, kinematics quantities, uh, velocity, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. We also want to look at it from a kinematics sense, and that's using the table that we're familiar with. Um, the good news about a problem of this type is that you can play this to your strength. Um, if you're very comfortable with vector components or uh, similar triangles, you can do most of the problem uh, using these methods uh, with one application of kinematics. If you're more comfortable using kinematics, you can do most of the problem with kinematics uh, using one application of vector components, as we'll see. Uh, I will show you both methods. Now note first that we are not uh, looking down on this problem from above. So this is a side view. The rocket starts here and it accelerates and moves to the right and up um, at this given angle. <coughs> uh, the, the angle given is described as an elevation angle. It's defined uh, as measured up from the horizontal. Um, it's consistent with our earlier definition of theta measured directly up from the x-axis. Again, the table attempts to describe the motion not only in terms of what the rocket actually does, that's the total column, but also in terms of the x and y components of the motion. The x components would be in the horizontal column, the y components would be in the vertical column. Now the first task is to take the given data and what we know about vector components. Um, we have three vector diagrams. We have displacement, we have a final velocity, and we have an acceleration diagram. Now the given acceleration is what the rocket actually does. So that's going to go into the total column, which represents what the rocket actually does. Um, it's also going to go onto the hypotenuse of this acceleration vector diagram. <clears throat> We're going to use trigonometry knowing the angle theta and the hypotenuse or the magnitude 5.81 meters per second squared to determine the x and y components of this acceleration. So again we know that the x component is the magnitude times the cosine of theta the y component is the magnitude times the sine of theta. We'll put in our data and we find that a sub x is 2.83 meters per second squared, a sub y is 5.08 meters per second squared. If your numbers don't match, check your mode, make sure you're in degrees. <coughs> now this x component, the acceleration goes in two places. First of all, it is the acceleration in the horizontal column of the kinematics table. It is also the horizontal x component of this acceleration diagram. Likewise the y component goes in the vertical column under acceleration and it also goes the vertical component of the acceleration diagram. 
Okay, now moving on, we don't have any information about the initial position, so we can assume that x0 is 0. This is the origin, in other words, this point. <coughs> so that goes in all three columns. We're also given the altitude. We want to know what the kinematics are when the rocket reaches an altitude of uh, 1,210 meters. Um, now the altitude is defined as the vertical displacement or the height. So we're going to put that in two places. It's going to go into the final position in the vertical column. It's 1,210 meters up. So it also goes on the vertical displacement diagram. Now the rocket starts from rest, so the initial velocity in all columns is zero. Now you'll notice that in the vertical column, uh, we have four values. So we can do the kinematics. What we'll find is that the time t is 21.8 seconds and the final velocity is 111 meters per second. We're going to put those in. And we're going to note also that the final velocity in the vertical column belongs on the velocity diagram in the vertical component. Now if you're comfortable with vector components and you're comfortable with the use of the formulas, X and for x and y components, you can use the formulas and the known angle, 60.9, to find all the other legs of this triangle, including the hypotenuse, and this triangle. So if you're comfortable using the formulas, you can use the, the component formulas to effectively do the rest of the problem. If you prefer similar triangles, the motion, again, is along this straight line here. So all three of these triangles have the same angle. They're all similar triangles. You can set up ratios and find the other sides of each of those triangles. Now, the time that you solved for using kinematics in the vertical column, this is not a vector. So time does not have vector components. There's only one rocket, and it, we're breaking up its motion into horizontal and vertical. But the time in each column is the same. So we can take that time, put it right here, put it right here. And now you can see that if you prefer the kinematics approach, you can do kinematics in this column. You have four. You can find the final velocity and the final um, position. The position would be, or the f displacement would go here final velocity would go here. Do the same thing in the horizontal column. Find the final velocity, it goes here. Find the final position, and it goes here. So here are your final answers. You can verify if you like that both approaches work and effectively give you uh, the same values. Um, recall that we're doing each of these in three significant figures. Uh, and keep in mind again that uh, you need to show work for each and every calculation uh, regardless of which method you use. Um, the formula the data substituted in and then your final answer uh, with units. Okay, that'll do it for two-dimensional kinematics. See you again soon.